Howdy, I'm Florian from LifeScienceMentor.com and today is day 45, I believe, of the Idea Machine Challenge. 180 days, every day, another topic that I'm thinking about um, 10 or more ideas about that. So, today is about how to get more bang for your buck, right? Um, and I have several ideas how to get more out of your dollar, even though I'm not a big fan of just, you know, um, just try to get like two cents off of your coffee or something like that. I believe there's often way more, way more, um, way more time and effort to negotiate something that is simply not worth it. But in some cases, you can get amazing discounts that you should probably not dismiss so easily. So, um, let's see, idea number one, and most of these ideas are just about doing that. So often it feels a bit weird if you didn't grow up in a culture where you bargain a lot, um, then, or your parents never did that, and never told you that, then it can feel pretty hard to ask for, for a discount already. I mean, it felt weird to me when I started that. Camadair from GameQuitters.com has a whole challenge how to quit computer games and to set a new purpose for your life. And so this challenge takes you through different levels um, of difficulty. And one of those areas of challenges that you go through is courage. And one of the missions in that challenge area is actually ask for a good looking discount. And I think that has been that has been um, pioneered by Noah Kagan. I'll have a link on my, in my blog article to that. But basically what you do is you go to a store and you ask for 10% off your coffee. Just go to Starbucks, ask 10% off your coffee. Just ask it. I mean, what can they say? No? All right. No big deal. But some stores actually say yes, especially the smaller ones where you have uh, where, like more the mom and pop stores. They are often much more open to negotiating. And I think that's another, that's another, another secret um, that the big chains often have not as much leeway for negotiating um, because first of all you can't build real personal connection with them and second they often have like pretty small profit margin per item so there's not much room to negotiate so rather the, the smaller neighborhood stores they can build up a relationship with you and they'll be more open to uh, to negotiating with for a discount or barter so the first first actually first tip is ask for a good looking discount for coffee because that gets you in the mindset of, um, of you know, of trying to get more value out of your dollar. And number two is uh, you can ask for including another item. For example, if you buy a computer, then you could ask for a price off. And if they don't give you that price off, you could ask whether you could get um, whether you could get another another item like software included in the price. When you buy the computer there, they give you the software on top for the same price instead of. $2,100 for Microsoft Office and the computer, you only pay $2,000, which, which would have been computer $1,900, Microsoft Office software $200, and together $2,100, but if you take both together, then you pay only $2,000. Something like that, right? Stores are sometimes more open to negotiate with you if you, if you actually signal that you want to buy more, because the more they sell, it's an advantage for them as well, right? Um... Then this, the third, third tip is promise the store to come back. Just if you live in the neighborhood, just talk a little bit about who you, who you, where you, who you are, where you're from, and so on, and then promise that you will come back. And if they give you a discount on that item that you're about to buy. Number four is advertisement for the store. And a friend of mine has done that with his car. Um, he drove a Skoda uh, um, caravan, like family car, and the store offered, or he asked for it, not sure how that went, but he ended up with advertisements for the car, for, for, for that store, for the dealership, plastered on the side of his car. If you don't really care if your car has a smooth, uniform color, then you can totally do that. So you have advertisement on the side for the dealership. And as a result, they reduced his monthly payment so much that he almost paid nothing because he could he could he use the car for work and he could he got a tax credit for using the car 
it was in Germany, and so in the end he didn't pay. He paid almost nothing for the car um, because advertising this the, the the monthly fee he had to pay for the store were really low, lower or almost as low as the tax credit he got. So that's the way you want to advertise. You could, for example, you could say, "Look, I can print your store logo on a T-shirt that I wear." And then you give me that item for cheaper. I mean, of course, like cheaper, including the price that you have to pay for making the T-shirt and then an additional price off. So if they would do that, because for them it's advertisement, right? So um, that you could that you could try. And I know that it has worked, at least for my friend, with his car. And number five is walk into the store with the back of their competitors. Don't shove the bag in the, into their face, but just place it there prominently, and then and then you ask, um, um, then then you ask that you're really shopping around and not sure which which shop you should take, and you already bought a little thing from that store, and you're not really bit on the fence if you should also buy that other item from that store, or whether you could buy it here. So they may get give it to you under um, under a price off. Number six is threatening them to leave. So, for example, if you have an internet uh, um, internet um, provider and then they kind of jack up the price or they don't jack up the price, you just call them and ask them if you get a couple of dollars off per month. And they're often eager to keep you, so um, they'll, be, they'll be ready to just go down with the price. I think I just did that when I got new internet uh, a new internet connection. Um, they wanted to Verizon wanted to up the price by twenty dollars per month, and I said, "Look, I didn't choose to get new internet installed here, and I would just like to keep it as it was before." Um, and they were more than willing just to charge the same price than before. So you can you can give a, apparently a lot of leeway for for making deals. Number seven is ask the store if you can get a um, if you can get a small sample. Let me just quickly write that item number six into my blog post. Um, all right, number seven is ask if you can get a small sample. Sometimes if you get a sample, you don't have to pay anything for it, like some perfume sample or soap or whatever, right? A coffee sample maybe from a coffee house. And that sample will last you a while and then you don't have to buy the complete coffee. If you're not sure the coffee is good, just take a sample and try it and you save money. Number eight, freelance and get book review copies. So if you go to sites like Fiverr, uh, Odesk, um, uh, um, or the other freelancer, Upwork, you can, you can review a book and you get the review copy for free. I did that with, uh, recently with creativity.inc or creativityinc. Dot com Creativity Incorporated by Ed Catmull. It's a book how he, where Ed Catmull, the CEO of Pixar, uh, talked about how he, you know, how he, how he brought the company up and and um, how the merger with Disney went and so on. And there, nice philosophies about business, about leading a business. So actually, um, that's a nice read. And I had to summarize it, but I got the book review copy for free. A PDF, and then I earned some money for summarizing it. So that I, that was a book that I that I didn't even didn't that I didn't spend any money on. I actually got money for reading it, and even more so than if I would have it just as an affiliate thing from Amazon. So that's number number nine um, is barter your services. So you basically talk to the store owner and talk to him a little bit about the problems he faces and maybe he has a nephew that he wants to get into that he wants to get some help with school maybe he needs his lawn mode or maybe he wants to make a web page for his business so maybe you can help him with these things maybe you can help his son his nephew with school uh teach him um maybe you can yeah you can mow his lawn or maybe you can actually design design a website for him right and for that service, he can actually give you items for free or for, for a reduction that you can basically offer your services in return for, for, for price reduction. Number 10, carpool, very simple. If you commute to work, just 
if a colleague lives close by, just pick up the colleague and then share the gas cost. Number 10, or number 11, we're now at number 11, buy fruits of the season or even conserve them. So, you know, oranges, you get them cheap in wintertime and they are fairly expensive in summertime. But, I mean, unless you're an orange enthusiast, you don't, it's just fruit, right? So there's always a huge variety of different fruits. So only buy the fruits that are in season. Makes also for a more interesting mixing up of, of your food, right? So you don't pay for the same amount of food you pay less dollar. Um, number and number twelve is ask for items with small blemishes. There are also outlet malls all, all over the country, and actually that was my first exposure with buying a Levi's five hundred one in back in nineteen ninety nine. They were like hugely popular in Germany. I was in Canada, and all of a sudden I could get a Levi, Le, Levi's five hundred one that just had a small problem with the seam was really not a problem at all. You could partly see it, but they sold it for one third of the price. So go to an outlet mall or even ask the store if they have an have a have a like item. Maybe the item that they have on display or had on display and then a small scratch, maybe the computer monitor has a small scratch scratch on the corner. No problem for you, you buy it for a reduced price. And number thirteen is ask for products that the store can't get sold. So every store has a problem of having items that they don't, don't get sold, right? I mean, it would be like, you'd be a magician if you can predict exactly how many items to buy for to exactly meet com consumer demands, right? So they'll have likely some, some items that they don't get sold. Um, maybe they have them already put them back into the, into the, um, into the back room or storage, and you can ask to, to pay for them. They would probably throw them out anyway, or burn them, and maybe you can get them for a price off. They should be happy in selling them to you. In fact, um, there's also uh, people that buy these items in bulk, and then sell them via Amazon with their fulfillment by Amazon program, or via other retailers that do that, and you almost get anything sold to a worldwide audience, if you're if you have an internet platform, have a worldwide reach, then you can send in items. They sell them for you. Um, whereas a local neighborhood store may not have the reach to fulfill all demands of that community. Right? They may have may have some items that they bought, and nobody from the from the neighborhood will ever need them. So then, or. Alternatively, also, after Christmas, you can buy the Christmas decoration for the next year for very much reduced price, right? That's something that you could do. Um, calendars are worth next to nothing, but, you know, when, when, when the year is over, but, you know, the, the same days come by uh, six or seven years down the line, or three or four years. So, you know, just... Just buy a calendar that, that you don't... If you want to have a calendar, buy it a few years in advance, right? So those are my those are my tips. And as I said, I don't like to bargain about like a small item. But um, I hope these tips can still inspire you. You can use them on a larger scale. And sometimes just asking for something is a fun exercise to do. Just ask for a discount for your coffee. As I said, I wouldn't just want to just get a discount for my coffee... Um, I much rather, I much, I would really not save on my coffee, but why not, right? It's a fun exercise. Just ask people to for a reduction. You you step a little bit over your personal fear, and um, you have something interesting to talk about, and maybe those those bargaining also works on a larger scale, right? Just don't be afraid. Just ask, and sometimes just ask, and you shall be given. That's very much true in, in, in a lot of different cases. So try it out. Let me know if you have some additional ideas. Let me know if some of these um, suggestions that I made uh, have helped you. I appreciate every comment you make and I respond to them almost as soon as I get them. If you enjoyed this video, click on like. Don't forget to subscribe. And happy to see you again. Have a nice start in the week and see you tomorrow. Goodbye.